Slop City Podcast! Oh, that's beautiful! Crisp. That is crisp. That. Oh my God! All down my pants. Your All... pants. What about my iPad? Hold on. Hold on. No. No. God I'm gonna get electrocuted. Damn it! Towel. I found one. I'm so mad right now. Jesus Christ! Ladies and gentlemen. In an unprecedented error, Tina has spilled her iced coffee all over the podcast studio. Oh my God, it is all in my underwear. Well, that's not my problem. My problem is my electronical equipment that I'm going to get electrocuted to. I'm really sorry. Jesus Christ, this guy don't know what she's doing. I'm so mad right now. Ready? That's why it's called Slop City, There's ladies and gentlemen. There's a towel for you. You just go ahead and use that fresh one. All right. Breathing heavy here. We love doing cool stuff like this. If you're just joining us, folks, I uh, had a little bit of an accident. Whoa. Tina's outside playing with her pussy. We clearly... Oh, God, everything smells like fucking coffee. That's a nightmare! Ah! Oh, my God! <laughs> Let me turn off the... Uh, Alarms that were set to wake me up. Ladies and gentlemen, it's me, Libby Higgins. And behind me, you can't see him. Hold on. Let me take Tina's camera off. You can see the one and only uh, Officer Daniels. Hold on a minute there, folks. Live. There he is. There he is, folks. We can see him in the window where was he five minutes ago when we needed help with, um, huh? What? You guys quote all these movies all the time. You haven't seen that. You haven't seen that. I've never, I've seen it, but I don't sit here and have a memorization of liar, liar. Well, I guess since it's just me on the podcast today, I'm going to take control and, uh, Start this. Start the podcast off with me. I am Libby Higgins. As I said, I'm the host, one of the hosts of, of um, Slop City. The other host is running around in her underpants. Cool. There's an airplane. The other host is running around in her underpants, trying to clean up iced coffee. And to me, the most important thing right now isn't cleaning up the iced coffee. The most important thing is is coming and sitting down. And finishing this podcast, because in approximately one hour, we have to leave to go to a show in Austin. <laughs> and uh, where's my Coke? I'm mad as hell. Let's let's see if we have any RBIs here for young Tina. Tina's uh, got uh, zero RBIs, and I've got two. That's how we're going to display that, folks. We're on the top of the ninth here. Top of the first, actually. No man on base, but I already have two RBIs because Tina isn't here. This is a podcast for two people. One person is here. Yeah, Tina spills her coffee. Spilled it on the table. She made a mess. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here she come back to the podcast. 
Looks like she's here. Get another RBI for me, for me, yeah. Here comes Tina. Back on the podcast. Gotta get her in the camera. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whoops. Still having. There we go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Welcome back to the podcast, Tina. Right at the end of the song. To be honest, don't think I deserve to sing the song today. Look, guess what? How many are we eyes? I have three. You have, you have th- zero. You, yeah, that makes sense. And if I could make it negative, I would. Yeah, I deserve to have it negative today. That there's <laughs> nothing in the world that makes me more mad than stuff like that. Well, it makes me mad too. Just kidding. I, that's fine. I'm not mad. I just want to know where my fresh, cold Coca-Cola is. It's not in here. It's over there. God. I guess we could try to do the song again. I don't deserve this song today. I'm greasy looking. Oh, thank you. Fresh, cold (sighs) Coca-Cola in the arms of an angel. Basically, what just happened was I took the mic. I was moving it around. My coffee was right here in front of me, just... Right there in front of me. The mic pulled the coffee and the coffee went poured directly into my pants. So I I am willing to bet that there is coffee inside of me right now. Well, I'm willing to bet that I don't even know what I was gonna say. Just trying to black out the coffee smell that we're gonna be smelling yeah. for the next hour. I gotta take a shower immediately after. Oh my god, do you really? Yeah, because I can't walk around with that smell all over me. Wait, did it get all over your pants? It's on me somewhere. <laughs> oh, man. I think you're just fucking smelled it on the ground right now. It's on my body. I mean, it's just like, why do I have to be like this? Why am I like this? What do you think it is? Is it, is it that I'm, I'm just zooming too quick? You're do just clumsy. Do I just clumsy. need to take a breath? You're just clumsy. I'm not wearing any pants right now because I got so yeah, mad. We saw you walking all around doing your thing. I took my soiled <laughs> underwear off. And I, all while that was happening, Officer Daniels is standing in the window saying quotes from movies that I didn't care about. If I hear one more, <laughs> oh, you haven't seen that movie <laughs> from someone. I'm fucking losing it. That's 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 where I'll be. I'll be done for. Do you have falsies on today? No. Oh, on my eyelashes? Yeah. No, honeys. Does it look like it? No, I was just looking. They look real nice. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Driving in the... Everyone deserves redemption. This song's for you. All the losers and the freaks out there. All the freakazoids. All the clumsy fucking losers oh yeah we're driving down the streets of austin no beach around but there's a comedy festival yeah 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 oh yeah we're driving down the streets of austin buying me a big beef rib to suck on no way, I can't believe this. Who's that? Why is there coffee inside of me? They ask me at the doctor when I go, cause I think I have postpartum depression. Nice. I did say something that wasn't true though. I, I, well, I was trying to, you know, you don't have a lot of time in that song to go through multiple stories. Right. Because I wanted to go through multiple stories of the freaks, the losers, the <laughs> freakazoids. And the one person that I decided to pinpoint on today was a person with postpartum depression during that song. Who was it? Don't know. Just was trying to think of something tough that was going on. <laughs> Just trying to think of someone overcoming adversity. You mean like Officer Daniels? Um, 
Oh yeah, he's he's always overcoming mm. adversity. Man, I love the smell of coffee, especially when it's <sighs> everywhere. <laughs> Libby is so close to losing her mind right now. The 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 space is better because we are close, but it, I'm turned a little bit, so it's better. But now I have to smell coffee. Sometimes that's the way the cookie crumbles, man. One time on the way to work, I ran out of gasoline, okay? <laughs> I'm going to tell you I want to tell you this quick gasoline. Story. I was driving my red Chevy Cobalt, 2008 Chevy Cobalt, working at a Underwood Law Firm. Now it is uh no longer B. That's gone. Huh? Uh Underwood Law Firm, it's gone. It's not a law firm anymore. It was a debt collection law firm. Okay. That I worked at. Ooh, I think I know what I'm going to do. You need a towel. For what? To sort of soften the blow. Yeah. Like me. Well, I think this is good. Um, So I was driving to this job. God, I started sweating, getting all stressed out, cleaning that coffee up. Well. What a bummer. If you had Big Tit Tracy's unspillable cup holder, it wouldn't have happened. No, it wouldn't have. And um, I'll be regretting that for the rest of my life. So. Tina, I'm not Tina. What's her name? Big Tit Tracy. If you could uh, go ahead and get Tina another one of those, bring it to the Kentucky show and we will reimburse you. Yeah, because we definitely need to have that on tour while I'm here. Because, I mean, you know, it's just, I've, this, I've had a life of suffering with being clumsy. Okay? You know, everyone wants a joke, dilly dally, j- just joke around about it. It's not fun. You think I like being like this? You think I like having to start the podcast off? That's a podcast for two people by myself. Do you think Libby likes how badly she smells of co- There is sugar-free carbo macchiato scent every, everywhere right now. Do you think that when I meet Howie Mandel tonight and make love to him, he's going to say, um, oh, he'll you, smell, you smell like coffee. He'll smell it from a and mile away. And then he'll away. stop making love to me. Oh, he'll smell it. And you might be saying, why are you meeting Howie Mandel? Well, I'm not going to, but I'm just putting it in the universe because that's called manifesting. Yeah. I don't know if he's married. If he's married, obviously, I'm not going to make love to him. Well, and I mean, you can't just be messing around with a guy that's got a fedora on. you got to walk up and show him respect. Oh, I'll show him a lot of respect as I bow to my knees and suck on his dog. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Hey, let me get a hit of that. i got to wipe my head. <laughs> Because these gals are too young to remember, but I said, hey, remember when Howie Mandel used to do that bit with the, he'd put a glove, a silicone glove, what's that called? A, a rubber glove. Oh, a rubber glove. And put it over his head and blow it up with only his nose holes. Okay. And nobody in here remembered that. And I, I'm like, hey, guess what? I don't even close to remember he that. He used to be a prop comic like K- Carrot Top. That, which is crazy to me, because Howie Mandel to me, I, I, I didn't even know he was a comedian. I just thought he was an American Idol judge. <laughs> I thought he did Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. He probably did that or Deal or No Deal. There, One of those. There, yeah, Deal or No Deal. I think it was Deal or No Deal. There was a few that he was rocking. And yeah, I'd like to, if we could get away with it, show clips of him, but we can't. Oh, for sure. His people are going to be on that. Yeah. And I'll tell him tonight, I'll say, hey, I'm a... This will really get him. I'll say, hey, I'm old enough to know what you used to do. And he'll go, oh, God, how embarrassing. And he'll walk away quickly. Oh, he'll probably, I bet he'll say, what do you mean? That incredible joke I used to do where I blew up the glove on my head? (laughs) And I heard that he suffered some damage from years of doing that. Really? Like brain damage? It might, well, like a nasal passage damage. And it, (laughs) it might be an urban legend, like the one where it's like, yeah, Rod Stewart had a bunch of cum in his stomach, had to be pumped out. Yeah, and Marilyn Manson. Those guys, too. Yeah. Um, if we had Randy here to type that in, he could look it up for us, but yeah. we don't have him. No, we uh, are actually not at liberty to do any of that right now. And especially, this is a splash zone today, so we really don't need to be <sighs> messing around with too much. We got to get back to basics. Oh, I remember what I was telling you. I was telling you the story about the gasoline. So listen, I'm driving to my job. <laughs> is that when you spilled it or did we start talking about something else? 
Well, no, it was, well, you were talking about smelling like coffee all day. And I said, I, I'm going to tell you a quick story about another time I smelled like something for a full day. Okay. And guys, I'm sorry, I'm rapidly sweating. It's like, I wish I was one of those people that didn't show how sweaty I was when I start getting there. But it's like, once I've got an inkling of embarrassment or anything like that, we're going balls deep in it, okay? You, you progressively start to sweat more and more and drinking your gallon of pure leaf tea, unsweetened iced tea. Well, I was like, I don't deserve a cup with no lid. I need mm-hmm. to have something. Like a that, sippy cup, a child sippy that cup. That can close up, like a children's sippy cup. So, made my red Chevy Cobalt 2008. It is a very cold day outside in St. Louis, Missouri. I mean, we're t- this, this was a cold cold day Mm -hmm. it was one of those cold days your mother warns you about when they're like you need to keep a blanket in the car because something could happen right you never know something could happen and and you may need that blanket one day and i was always like oh shut up svetlana shut up all my friends moms Mm -hmm. and i run out of gas yep and got cold huh got really cold (laughs) cold to the point of no return (laughs) and I sat in my car for probably five minutes because I'm like, what the fuck am I going to do? I was right at this exit off of like 44 in Jefferson in St. Louis, which, or 44 in Arsenal or something by Johnny Brock's. There's a gas station down there to the left. Right. So I sat in the car for about five minutes thinking, what the fuck am I going to do? I don't have a fucking gas tank in my car. I don't have shit. How am I going to be able to even fix this? So I kind of just sat there for about 10 minutes, just mulling off the remaining heat. Mm-hmm. Smoked a few cigarettes and then <clears throat> went to start walking to the gas station. Oh, what a loser. I had to. No, no, I mean, what what am I going to do? Hold my little paws out and be like, help and be whatever, you know? Yeah, you're an attractive lady. It works for women that I did, are attractive. Well, what I ended up doing is walking down to the gas station, buying a gas can, filling it with gasoline, then walking back the whole way up, <laughs> chugging this thing of gasoline and my hands. Wait, you were chugging it? No, you know, ch- chugging along. I wasn't, I wasn't high, high, huffing. Okay. So huffing you're, it or anything like that. How many miles do you think? How, oh, I would say half a mile down, half a mile back. Nope. So I would say a mile total. Okay. You say a nope because you would have not walked it? I would have been calling AAA or whoever to come get me or an Uber or somebody. Well, what ends up happening is I get this gas can back up there and I'm like, simple job. Just open up, open up the little thing, pop the little puppy out, and then you just start pouring into there, mm-hmm. you know? So I start pouring into there and uh, there was a hole there in the lip of something that I put on that wasn't fully closed on all the way. Gasoline starts spewing out of the gas can mm-hmm. onto my hands. It's... <laughs> Under 30 degrees. My <laughs> hands are immediately turning drier than they've ever been in their lives after having gasoline poured on them. I cannot get this fucking gas can to work. So I call the police. I just call 911 because <laughs> I'm covered <laughs> in gasoline. Head to toe. Did I light up a cigarette? Yeah, of course I did. You did? Lit up a cigarette. Just wiped my hands off as dry as I could, lit the cigarette out here and just kind of you know, stayed cool. Well. And uh, get get this. God. What? Nothing. I get, uh, the policeman shows up. And he's like, first of all, ma'am, we're the police, not AAA. <laughs> he goes, hey, first off, where's your blankie? <laughs> and I was like, okay, man. You You're know, like, okay, mom. Yeah, whatever. No, they, uh, he, he couldn't figure out the gas can either. It was a tricky one. And he said that, boy, this is a tricky one. And he tried and tried, and basically it ended up being uh, pretty simple. You just kind of align it properly, and then you push, and all of the gasoline is then released into the car. Instead of onto you and your body. Instead of onto me and the body. Pretty simple all around. And uh, I end up thanking the man, you know, and then I get back in the car, and when I say I smelled like gasoline... <laughs> It smelled like something was wrong. Like, if a person walked by me smelling like that, I'd be like, hey, did someone try to catch you on fire last night? 
because they had to have. I walk into the debt collection law firm that I'm working at, and I mean, the most foul-smelling gasoline smell anyone has ever smelled. And people are immediately like, oh my God, Tina, what is that smell? You smell like gas, you know? And I mean, I'm drenched. Were you late for work? Oh yeah. Hour and a half. Easy. So they believed you. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I smelled, yeah, I guess I could have just poured gasoline all over me. I'm like, can you believe this? The next time you're late for work, folks, pour some I'm not even going to say that because somebody would do it and then catch on fire and blame us and sue us. Oh, yeah. And I'm, I'm not ready for that. Excuse me. I need my towel. Well, we had a similar situation where we ran a gas out of gas on tour. Were you with us at this point? I was not. And the I'm... Uh-uh. Nope. And because I had read the full manual, I knew how to do the gas tank. Oh. You had to have a special little thing and it was in the trunk. And you're telling me that you read the full manual of the Jeep. Uh, Front to back. Pretty much. Just for fun? I read it just for fun, didn't I, Beth? The full G. You don't have to crawl through here, Beth. The cameras are facing us. (laughs) That was so embarrassing, dude. (laughs) You couldn't really see her, which is sad. Oh. God damn it. Oh, man. It was so good. Beth crawled. She crawled and... (laughs) It was like that one little kid in in a... yeah, I'm sweating. You know what video I'm talking about where it's like a guy doing a news story and he's at home because it's quarantine. Oh, and the kid comes in. The kid in. comes in, the mom comes in, like grabs him and is like crawling out with the kid. Yes. Going down the streets of Nashville. I wish I could fix the white balance on my camera. It just looks terrible. Oh, Ooh, man, I just had to dry all that sweat off. That is, this is unreal. And all that cum. And ugh, there is no cum. No one's coming on, no one's freaking coming on me. I ain't got one person coming on me. So how long, how much longer did you last at the at the lawyer firm after you came in smelling like an actual gas tank? Well, they wouldn't let me go home <laughs> and change, which I was like, that's very cruel and dangerous yeah i'm walking around touching printers touching paper people were getting these fucking things in the mail saying like hey there's a judgment against lisa walters versus cap (laughs) cap one versus the city of st louis yeah and there's like nine different one there's like nine different companies (laughs) listed on there because they've just like not paid any bills well they've bought this fucking debt oh i don't even remember if I learned this there or what, but like, there's a lot of like rules when a, when you're a debt collector and you call someone asking for money, like you, some of the things were crazy though. Like they're like, you cannot curse at the people. And it's like, well, yeah, like I, I wasn't planning on calling them and berating them. Like they have all these really sad rules that I'm like, was someone really debt collecting like this? They call and they're like, Hey, what's up loser? Listen, you motherfucker. Listen, you fuck. Start paying your bills now or else. Listen, you fucking loser. The company I work for bought this debt seven times over. We (laughs) bought this for pennies on the dollar. (laughs) And yeah, what we're doing here is a crackpot and illegal. We're all quacks. But we're going to need you to set up a payment plan. They were scary, the collectors. I wonder if that's a lucrative business, buying debt. Can't be. Because I feel like after a certain time, you don't even have to pay it anymore. Like, that's what I've decided. I have a medical bill that just showed up from 2020, the year of COVID, when I went and got COVID tests because I worked the whole time. Right. I got a bill. They're trying to get me to fucking pay it now. I'm like, that's the funniest thing I've ever- How much is it? Like 270, but I don't give a fuck. I'm not paying them. Who the fuck do they think they are? Don't pay it. I've just decided if there's a bill like that and I disagree with it, that I don't have to pay it. If I disagree with it in that I did not want to go to the doctor. Do I look like I wanted to go to the doctor? No, you don't. Do you think I wanted to go there? And they were like, yeah, we'll bill your insurance. I'm like, no, 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 no. You don't get to go do your bookkeeping two years later and then decide, (laughs) hey, Guess what, Christina? We messed up. It's and just now they first bill ever. Just now. And guess what? Nope. I don't even remember who insured me at that time. How am I supposed to fucking deal with any of that? Well, the statue of limitations. Yeah. 
Well, I've got a statue and it has limitations and you can't send this after a certain amount of time. Oh, God, Denny, I'm really sorry, man. We really wanted to pursue this case, but I've got this statue right here and I'm looking at its <laughs> limitations. And uh, There's a lot of them. There's a lot of them. This thing can't go outside the room. You know what I'm saying? Literally, it's a statue. This How, statue can't leave the room. How's a statue going to be get out, getting out of here? You sniffing around. So what are you going to do? You're going to just send it back and say, no, thank you? Oh, I'm not sending it back at all. You know what I've done every time I do it? I open up the thing, look at it, get mad when I see the date. Because I think, <laughs> how are you guys just now getting to all this? And I understand that some would say, well, you you took a service. So now you got to pay it back. And that's your, that's your responsibility as a patient. Well, guess what? I don't want... Uh, this is the largest fucking urgent care in the city of St. Louis, okay? Which one? Mercy. You think uh, I'm... I'm not letting that. those little fuckers try to tell me what to do. It, it's not happening. I just keep looking at the bill and closing it. Throw it away. And I don't even <clears> put it in the recycle. I just put it in the straight fucking trash. Now, when you... That's how you show them. Did bill collecting, did you have to say, oh, this is a recorded line? Yes, and I only did it for probably a few weeks because I ended up, like, just not... Because I, I was at the law firm, quit, and then I came back briefly, and that was when they tried to make me a collector. And I was just like, this, I can't do this. I can't call these people. This woman's 90 years old, and y'all are hounding her about, like, $1,000. And there's, like, 400 in interest on it. I mean, just... just oh, my God. Oh, God. That's just really Did the... Rough. Uh, did... Well, was it recorded, really? Or did they just fake, fake say that? Oh, it's recorded. I think they record everything. Like, legally, you have to. Now, I'm sure there's a bunch of places, like, say there's a top dog, some top seller there. And they're like... How's Darren getting all these sales? How's he getting all these payments? What's he doing? Is he berating? Maybe, oh, I bet he's berating. I think, yeah. You know what I've done before? When they say, oh, this line is being recorded, I say, oh, you're being recorded too. <laughs> and they yeah. don't know what to say. They're like, oh. Oh, great. Well, let me go ahead and get mine. And they'll hang up. Let, oh, man, I wish I had my phone so I could look up what the what the actual thing is. Well, I, you can look on my phone. I got my phone right here. Here, Google that, or uh, hand me that thing once it's open so I can read you the Miranda. Show but, me your Miranda rights. Here's what I want to know. Who's Miranda and how did she get so get, many rights? Yeah. what? Women don't have rights. I want to be that the woman. Fuck? Miranda. God, I hate the way this looks. The way that the camera looks? Yeah. What, I mean, it's. Cool, you're in Spanish here, so I typed in manana debt connector. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, baby. Okay. Manana, manana debt collector. God, I look like a witch. <laughs> I'm a witch and I fly on a broom. <laughs> Where's she going? I'm not going anywhere. I'm just wiping off all this fucking snap. Jesus Christ. I started panicking, and now it's off the rails. Now I'm deep in it. God. Now we're talking about Miranda, and I'm just like... Who's my Miranda? Okay. The Statue of Limitations says that Miranda Wright... So... This is what it says. When a debt collector contacts you by phone or mail, one of the first things they'll state is the mini Miranda. It's a mini Miranda. The debt collector will say something like, this is an attempt to collect a debt and any information obtained will be used for that purpose. Then they'll say, you you have the right to remain silent. <laughs> oh, yeah. Every single time I called someone, I'd be like, hey, listen, you, listen, puppy cat. This is puppy cat. Hey, listen up, puppy cat. This is a uh, this is an attempt to collect a debt. This is a, a recorded line, and any information that I gather during this will be used against you and your family, and for the pursuit of debt collection. And do you tell them your name? Oh, and I say my name is uh, my name's Christina. Do you say your real name? No, I don't. I know, I don't think I told them my name. Maybe I'd hit them with a. This is Tina, and they're kind of like, "Who's Tina?" Yeah, and then you say, you know, Tina Debo, I'm on Instagram. I'm also a comedian. I travel all over the world. Have yeah. you heard of me? And then I, I, they start to talk, and I said, you have the right to remain silent. They're like, huh? They're like, am I being arrested? I'm like, uh-huh, over the phone. And yeah, Okay, so do, what do I have to do? Do I have to go outside my door, and they'll come get me, or do I just sit here, and they come in? First, I'm going to need a few bouts of information from you. 
Okay. Okay. What's your birth date? Well, you should don't have tell it. me a fake one. You should have it. I need you to confirm it or deny it. Well, I don't understand why you bill collectors do this. You call me and want me to confirm my details. What if you're a scammer? Well, I'm not a scammer. How do I prove that to you? You want me to send you a picture right now over email? I can send you a picture over okay. email. I'll send you a picture of me right now. Yeah, let's send it. And I'll tell you exactly what I'm wearing. <laughs> My email is uh, lethargy. Lethargy. Franklin. Franklin. 420. 420. At gmail.com. At gmail.com. Ooh, you got one of those. I got an AOL still. That's fun. <laughs> okay. Um. All right. So I just sent you over a photo, and you should see right. exactly who I am. Whoa. Starts with a B. You are sweating profusely, Bob. <laughs> God. Yeah. So the comb over has been working for you then? Oh, comb over has been great. What do you think about it? So let me okay, ask you l- this. Let me send you another picture. Ch- this, Wait, this I is- want to look at this one. All right. Is this in your home or are you in a workspace? Uh, right now I'm at the library. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm at the public library right now just uh, working from home. Okay. Yeah, so. Yeah, go ahead and send me another one. I'd like to see it. Yeah, I'll send you another picture. This, this is a good one. This is a, uh, this is of uh, uh of my favorite president. Guess guess who? Oh, God. I don't even think I've ever seen that president. Who is that? What are you talking about? That's Bill Clinton. Oh, that's Bill. Is that you and Bill Clinton? Yep, me and Bill Clinton. Man, oh, I'm- you still had the comb over then. Wow, that's interesting. How many years have you been rocking that comb over? Oh, this comb over? Well, I, uh, I'm going to be collecting Social Security benefits here in about four years, so that makes me 61. Uh, I would say I've been rocking the comb over since about... Age four. Four? Yep, age four. Oh, yeah, you should see my children pictures. Send me a couple pictures of you as a kid. Yeah, let me send some <laughs> over to you real quick. I love the brown suit you're wearing. It's a little on the baggy side. Well, I always say if you're going to be collecting people's debt, you need to be dressed in uh, 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 to impress. Y- you you know, need to be wearing a suit at all times and have your hair done nice because people aren't going to believe you. In, the, in you know, You know who you remind me of? Have you ever seen that meme where it's like if you're – Public defenders wearing this, you're going to jail. Yeah, those are good. And like this really baggy, baggy dress pants. Yeah. And tennis shoes, like a like a New Balance black tennis shoe. Oh, for sure. I've seen dudes like that. Guys that think they're some kind of wannabe cool guy debt collector. They want to freaking flex on me. Right. And I'm always like, <laughs> who are you kidding? You look like you're here for a day of golf and I'm here for a day of work. Yeah. Well. And then I pull I my would- comb out and. I wouldn't say you look like you, you're you about to work. I mean, you do look like you're about to work, but it looks. All I'm saying is if you could be on that show, Greatest American Makeover, they'd help you. Wait, the one where they reveal the person and how they look with the bus? Yep. They say. <laughs> they move up. They say, move that bus. <laughs> they scream, move that bus. And then and your family is on one side of it and you're on the other and then they move it and they see you with not a comb over anymore or a very baggy brown suit. Yeah, for sure. What's wrong with the baggy suit? You don't like it? I always it thought just it looks unprofessional. Look- you're telling me right now that your respect for me as a debt collector goes down when you see me in that in a suit versus some cat wearing a polo and jeans. Who are you trusting more? That's what I want to know, because I'm trusting the guy in the suit 10 out of 10. Well, all I'm going to say is, when you first called, my level of respect was at 70. Then you sent the picture, and it went immediately down to 30. Because of the bagginess of the suit and the comb over. Because we know you're going bald, and it's okay to be bald. But what you're doing with that comb over with the four strands of hair going <laughs> over to the middle? No, I don't know what you're talking about. That That is... You can't even see my forehead. That, <laughs> I mean, uh, my top of my head. You can't even see it. Let me send you another picture. Send you All a picture. Right. What do you think? Ten years ago, maybe one. I want to um, see your child picture. All right, let me let me uh, send you over this child picture real quick. Right. Just okay. Send. All right. All right. Uh, sent you over a few. Wow, it's like got them in you my favorites now. In a baby carriage with the same hairstyle. And the tiniest brown suit I've ever seen. Yeah, my dad loved suits. He actually, uh, they they tried to put me in this cute little nightgown when they baptized me. And my dad said, nope. You mean like a christening nope. dress? He is not going to be wearing that that little christening dress. What he's going to be wearing is a is a nice a crisp, brown suit. <laughs> crisp brown suit. And they dunked me in that water and the water turned dark. Because of your brown. suit or because you were dirty? No, I shit my pants uh, into the holy water. 
Which honestly is the funniest joke in the world. Before the pastor died, we joked about it all the time. We were so just, you had a pastor that was putting you in holy water? Because as far as I know, Catholics are the only people that use holy water. And they don't have pastors, they have priests. Uh, but I'm not a religious expert. Yeah. Sorry. Somebody the just, Holy Ghost just opened up that door. The Holy Ghost just opened a door. <laughs> Um, no, okay, sorry. So I guess I'm mix, you know, mixing up the, the religions and all that. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, all I know is guy had me in line, dunk me in in white, and my dad said, my dad, he said, absolutely not. My son is not going to be wearing a white dress when he gets dipped into this water. And my dad said, I want a taste of that water. Your dad tasted the holy water? <laughs> yeah, he, he tasted it. Yeah, he took a sip. He took a couple sips of the, the holy water, and honestly, everybody was appalled at first, but then, you know, his uh, gout went away, so. Wow, really? Yeah, pretty cool stuff, so. Well, my, it seems like it would have healed you, too. It seems like it, maybe more than four strands of hair would have grown in the top of your head. Yeah, I just wasn't really super blessed with that, but I like to keep the strands that I have strong. Right. So that's why I keep working them every day. I keep. <laughs> you maybe use a it's a tin style conditioner. Oh man, that stuff is good. And you know, you go to Marshalls, you can get a bottle of that. It's a ten for about I'd say fifty percent off. Wow, pretty good stuff. But I does you know you know how I found out about it's a ten. What? It's a young little flame. Huh? This young little flame. She was an aspiring debt collector. You're not gonna believe it. I fell in love with her. Really? Yeah. <laughs> fell in love with her. And what, what happened? Well, I uh, had her over to my studio apartment one evening. Yeah? Cooked her a meal. Uh-huh. Even though I don't have a fridge. Uh, didn't at the time. Got a fridge now. I just want you to know. But uh, cooked her a meal. Mm-hmm. And uh, we made passionate love after the meal, even though we were both very full. Uh, <laughs> yeah? <laughs> we, uh, we looked at some... Some photo albums of me, and you know, I I kept a huh. <laughs> we, <laughs> we uh looked at some photo albums, and she was like, "Oh man, I love that brown suit." And I was like, "Oh, put it on." And so she whoa yeah she put it on. She put on the brown suit, and uh, I mean, I did do something embarrassing. I did uh, ejaculate <laughs> <laughs> to her. You're I, my debt collector. Why are you telling me all this? <laughs> this is weird. What, um, I'm just. Can you hold on a second? I have some macaroni and cheese on the stove. I need to stir it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I don't want anything. Yeah, you do your thing. I'll be here. I'm going to put it. I have actually have on hold music, so I'm going to put it on for you. Yeah, that sounds great. Wow, what a cool lady. Oh, I just urinated in my pants a little bit. Oh, man. Thanks for holding on there for a second. Bob. Yeah. How's, uh, the, how's the mac and cheese looking? It looks good. You know when you have it on there for too long and it starts to get foamy? Mm-hmm. That's where it was. So I had to turn it. I'm just going to let it. I turned it off for a little bit. For sure, dude. Huh? I said for sure, dude. Yeah, this, there's this punk kid that's always up at this library. And every every day I see him, and I'm always like, hey, what's up, man? And he says, for sure, dude. So I just kind of co-opted his saying. Do they know that you're using their internet and everything f- for uh, profit? I'm hooked up the hotspot on my cell phone. Excuse me, are you smoking a vape in the library? <sighs> no, no. Yeah, I just hit a, I just, I just took a bite of a c- c- cannoli. But it sounded like you went. <sighs> well, yeah, I was sucking in the juice from the cannoli. God, Here, a- listen, I'm taking another bite of the cannoli. Yeah, it sounds like you're sucking on a, a, some kind of cigarette. Thing. What are you up to today? This has been a slow day for me. You're actually the first person that's answered, so you're gonna kind of just call me and want to get debt from me, and then ask me how I'm doing. I'm not doing good, obviously. I have bills that I haven't paid. I've been laid off. Since COVID, since I'm COVID. eating mac and cheese, and I'm talking to a guy named Bob with a f- terrible comb over. So you tell me how I am. Okay, well, hey, why don't you do me a solid and send me a picture of you, and we'll see if you're something special. <laughs> you want to roast me about my four strands of hair that I take deep care of, which, by the way, I didn't finish my story. Okay. The little flame that came over, I'll she ended it. up spending the night after we made passionate love. 
okay? And we were kissing, kissing all over each other. And, uh, you know, she was, she was nuzzling her hands for my four strand, you know, four strands is what you say, but I'd say it's more like 100, 112 strands. So, but you can say what you want about that. Uh, All right, let me just take a quick picture here. Yeah, go ahead and send me one over. All right, so, but bottom line is. Sent that over. Checked into her little medicine thing, you know, her little, her little thing the next morning. Huh? uh, Her belongings she brought over to get herself ready in the morning. And it said, it's a 10. And I said, yeah, she is a 10. And it must be because of this stuff she's using. So, I just pumped a little pump of that in my hair. Got it all styled up, and then I did jerk myself off to completion with uh, it's a ten. <laughs> with so, her, it's a ten. Yeah, with her, it's a ten. Sprayed two str- two in there, did it in my hair, and then two in the hand again, and then I just jerked my penis off to completion. Well, she was still there. <laughs> she was still there. Yeah, sleeping. Okay. Yeah. You want to see my picture? Oh yeah, let me check it out. Let's see. Okay, uh, it's from Lethargy. Is that because you're tired, or what's the deal? It's just a little joke. My name is uh, Lethandra, and my dad always says, you're so lazy, we should have named you Lethargy. And, um, <clears throat> mm, interesting. And, um, it wasn't that I was lazy. It's actually that I am, um, I cannot walk. Can't walk. I'm in a wheelchair. And um, Oh, Lord. And my dad would say, you're so fucking lazy. I'm like, Dad, I am... Yeah, what's a guy's problem? It's like, I'm disabled. Right. Wah, wah. What do you want me to do? Climb up there and start getting out leaves out of the gutter? It's like, I'm in a fucking wheelchair, Dad. <laughs> right. God, they're right. cruel. Yeah, I had, I had uh, at the age of four, I was skiing with my dad at a ski resort. Wow, you must have been good. Like, I was good. Were you like Gwyneth Paltrow's kid good? Yep. And I hit a, I was paralyzed, so I was um, in a wheelchair. But he would always say, you know, you're so lazy. Anyway, what do you think of the picture? Oh, picture's great. What are those? Some kind of, looks like you got some nice little gray streaks. And then you also got a uh, little pop of red in there. Yeah, that's blood. (laughs) Oh, sorry. That was a really freaked out reaction what's what's the blood doing there for because i'm gonna be honest it looked like splat that dye no it's the hair dye blood. that teenagers are all using no. i keep up with the trends it's yeah blood i when i was cooking earlier and i had the upper cabinet open and it i always forget i've done this probably once a week for the last 12 years since i lived here i hit my head on it and then immediately my head starts bleeding into my hair wow that's when you called so i haven't had a chance yet to clean it or so you just kind of been sitting around bleeding for a while. I wasn't sitting around. I I hit it. I I started my mac and cheese. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I'm gonna be honest. It's not name brand. It's off brand. It's great value mac and cheese. Started that. Put it on. Went to get some salt out of the cabinet. Hit my head, and that's when it bleed. And then next thing I know, the phone rings, and it's you, Bob. And you weren't calling to say, "Hey, guess what? Publishers Clearinghouse, you want a million dollars." What you're actually calling to say is, "Hey." Your car is going to be repoed. Let me guess. That's right. Is that what it is, Bob? No, 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 no. This is actually something. Cap one. Yeah, it is cap one. <sighs> I'm calling with cap one. But here's the deal. I'm not with cap one. I'm with Larry Katziff's law firm. Larry Kat- huh? Larry Katziff's debt collection law firm. The initials for that is LKDCLF. I think it just saying Larry Katz if law firm would be easier. Well, we need to specify it's a debt collection law firm because we don't need people calling up asking about injuries and car wrecks and all that stuff, you know? Mm-hmm. So, uh, but here's the really great news. I can, uh, your balance from what I'm looking at right now, uh, let me uh, crunch some numbers real quick with Larry. I got him on the horn here. Uh, it looks like your balance is about... Uh, 900 bucks. Oh, God. You're calling me about $900? Yeah. It's Jesus my job. Jesus Christ, Bob. $900. What? In, the, in Capital One's whole whole thing, they were probably a billion-dollar industry, and they're worried about my $900? Well, let me tell you why they're worried about your $900. I can see here a record of every single debt collector that's ever called you in your entire life, okay? Yeah. And we've had multiple that have gotten to the Miranda reading portion of the call, but after that, it drops off. And, and you're a goner. Mm-hmm. So I will say uh, the <laughs> Debt Collection Association better be giving me an award this year because I've managed to keep you on the phone for God knows how long. Well, and usually what happens is, and I'm going to say what I say to them, 
at the beginning of the call, and I forgot because you immediately got me with your charm and grace, is you are also on a recorded line. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I've never heard that. That's good. And everything you've said up until this point and from this point thereafter has been recorded and in a safe, reliable recording device that cannot be erased unless I put in a four-digit code. Great. So that's actually going to be looking pretty bad for me, if you ask me. Well, I mean, I did say a few unsavory things on this call and not anything that's wrong. I just may have shared a bit too much personal information with you. And You uh, mean like when you made love to It's a 10 and jerked off with her to com- hair? To completion. With her hair tonic? Yeah, I used her hair tonic and I used it right. All right, let me, let me, uh. Nowhere on the back of it's a 10 does it say put in your palm of your hand and jerk off to completion. (laughs) Well, I, uh, tend to read between the lines. Even if you read between the lines, it (laughs) says, doesn't say anywhere. Use a stranger's, uh, it's a 10 to jerk off to completion. Let me explain something to you, okay? The way that I read between the lines and what I'm talking about is, listen, I mean, I've played guitar for a long time, but I can't read music. I can't. <laughs> Let me get this straight. You give me a guitar, I can play that fucker. You know how to play guitar, but you can't look at your own head and know that four strands going from one side. What do you suggest I do? That's what I want to know. You got something to say about my hair. And you know what? And then I'm going to be getting off this phone call and I'm going to pretend this never happened. I'm going to pass this up the horn to Larry Katzif and I'm going to have him give you a call because I'm about freaking done dealing with you for the day. Okay. But Again, remember, you are on a recorded line. Oh, f- piss off. <laughs> yep, I said it. You're, I would just shave it, Bob. And what, have a freaking pencil head like a magic racer man? You want yeah. me to be walking around looking like Mr. Clean? It just, it makes you look unprofessional because we know, everyone that sees you knows that you're taking four strands of hair and delicately okay. combing them over <laughs> okay. the top of your head each day. Okay. Uh, I would really like to clarify something. I'm not delicately doing anything. All right. I get out of the shower and whatever's going on on this side, I just slap it over to the other side. Okay. And there's a connection that happens. And you can't blame that connection of these strands of hair onto the remaining hair on the side of my head. You can't blame that on me like I'm some kind of freaking just for men loser. Okay? Can't blame it on me. There's a connection that's happening in my brain, in my head, because, you know. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right, well. Uh, Wait, you mean to tell me that you use Just for Men on four strands of hair? No, I'm, I was saying that as a, as a burn. Oh. Yeah, no, I don't think that came across very properly. You know what I think, Bob? And I'm going to just be honest with you since you've been honest with me. Okay, hit me. I think you shave those four strands, shave the rest of the head. Mm-hmm. Get you a, a better fitting suit. I think you'd be okay looking, and maybe a little bit more professional. And if you got on Zoom calls as a deck collector, I think you get a little bit more respect. I guess I could do that. <laughs> Gonna have to have a home office. So where are you living out? Where are you? Uh, what's your kind? What's uh? What's been up with you? You have my address. <laughs> All right. You know I live on the Upper East Side. Yeah. Smallest apartment you've ever seen. Yeah, for sure. Well, uh, sorry, I'm out of breath. I was just, uh. You're smoking in the library, Bob. Okay, I did take a hit. I took a couple of hits, and then the kid next to me, that little punk kid, he let me take a rip off of his, uh, weed vaporizer pen. So I did take a, uh, a plug of that, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. The guy that says for sure? Yeah, the kid that says for sure all the time. Huh. He asked me, do you want to hit this pen and I picked up my pen and I went to smack pens with him like a fun sword game but he was talking about a marijuana vaporizer pen so I looked at him and I said for sure (laughs) (laughs) yeah well guess what um you're not gonna believe this what I have actually something to tell you (laughs) okay and I don't want you to hang up I my name is actually Larry Kurtlander Kurtzlander Larry Kurtzlander? I, you're on the show, Undercover Boss. And what I found out today, Bob. Oh, God. Oh, God. What I found out today. Oh, no. Just listen, Bob. Listen. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Bob, calm down. 
<laughs> Even though you didn't follow protocol. Oh, God. What you showed to this fake person whose name was Lethargy She's not is compassion. Yeah. Grace. Yeah. And true human kindness. Yeah. And that those aren't the things that our company stands for. What is what does our company stand for? Uh well we stand for getting the money. Bottom bottom line, we want the money. Okay. And if we have to do it with cursing, uh threats and everything, that's good. But you, you don't belong here, Bob. You're a good guy. Yeah, do you have four strands of hair that you comb over every day and it looks ridiculous? I yeah. get. What I'm saying is is I am going to promote you to the mailroom where you can <laughs> use your human kindness to 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 give each little office their their mail to sort mail that's yep. wow that is really something i never thought i'd be on undercover boss and actually get a worse job that no is, that's better for you bob oh you're not this you don't belong here bob Listen. you're a good guy you're not like the rest of us you have feelings i mean look at my numbers they're the worst in the state they're, of they're the worst they're the worst in this entire country to be honest i don't even know how i they're terrible i mean i get why i am where i am it's like i'm working out of a library like i mean things you're, are tough you're not like the rest of us and and i can even see that even though i'm cutthroat i can see that you don't belong here so that's why i'm promoting you well hey uh, to the mail room all right man uh Cool. I just guess the only thing I really ask of you is to give Larry Katzif a call. That's my boss. No, that's me. No. <laughs> Wait. I'm I, I'm your boss, but I'm undercover. Oh God, you really didn't get it this whole time? Oh. Oh, I thought you were a guy named Larry Kartsaf that my boss, Larry Katzif hired no i'm larry katz if i just said my name funny just to kind of see what you would do oh well it threw me off i'll tell you that that threw me off quicker than anything in this entire world i can't even fucking believe this man i just got got well hey before i get off the horn with you and uh pack up my stuff for the day now that i don't have to fucking be here anymore do me one solid read me my miranda rights okay bob this will be the last time you could just kind of say, just make sure to say the word Miranda in there at, and I'll be good. At 5.45 p.m. on Wednesday, April 19th. Time of death. <laughs> I read Bob, his last Miranda writes. This call is being recorded, recorded. for debt collection, pur- for debt collection purposes, purposes and also only. so we can make our staff better. Okay. And if you would report to the mailroom on Monday instead of the library where I didn't know you were operating from, um, that'd be great. Okay. Thank you so much. I will be there. I just want to make sure one thing. uh, So that lady was not real who I was talking to? No. That was me using the fake voice. God, I hate AI. (laughs) Thanks a lot, Larry. I'll be talking to you soon. Please have a great weekend. All right, see you on Monday. Okay, man. Bye-bye. What was that? (laughs) He's making out. What a weird, what a weird, weird set of circumstances. I think the thing that I love about those characters and just uh, when we decide to do any kind of call thing, one person gets overly personal (laughs) every time. (laughs) <laughs> and Bob was very personal. I mean, in saying things that, that are like, <laughs> why are you telling someone that you prematurely ejaculated? Using the ladies, it's a tent. Unbelievable. I love that he was on Undercover Boss, though. I do love that show. It's a good show. But come on. You put a wig and a mustache on a guy and nobody's going to recognize him? No, they're not smart people. What a bunch of losers. Oh, God, they're so fucking stupid. Um, so before we wrap this up today, I wanted to show you my potential period products. Are they in your underwear? (laughs) No. Wow. I can already see one. Okay. So I left my June cup at home, which is the thing, the menstrual thing that I wear I put in my pussy the little cup. Mm-hmm. I, the one that I get is a June cup. 
And uh, I left it at home because I've been taking my birth control straight so that I don't even have a period. Right. So I was at Kroger or whatever fucking grocery store. Oh, I was at Heb. H-E-B, Heb. Right. And I found this little guy there. It was only six ninety nine. It's called... Not Diva. An Eva Cup. Isn't that so sad? Hold that right in front of that, that thing. There you go. Eva Cup. Now, is that thing too long where it's going to poke you? I think it might be, but here's the sizing guide. And this is 100% medical grade silicone, so I do want you to know that. All righty. All right, it's pink, so your period blood ain't going to stain it. It's for a better period experience. And here was, they had two different sizes. Smalls, small, smalls, <laughs> smalls. One is small, before childbirth. <laughs> <laughs> For women who haven't given birth vaginally or by C-section, it is ideal for first-time cup users and young women. So that's the size I got. And then there's size two after childbirth for women above 30 and those who have delivered vaginally or via C-section. Isn't that just wild that they're like, oh, oh, okay, you're, you're above 30 and now you get this. And I'm like, this before childbirth one... I mean, I haven't give. I have not. And this right here is the one. This is the one that for people that are over thirty who are have given <laughs> birth. Yes. Yeah, so here, this is the Eva Cup two. This is size one right here and two. This and then we got two over there. Yeah. So that thing can really hold a lot of volume. <laughs> In terms of voltage, I would say that one can hold uh, probably one hundred twenty, and that's got that's sixty size minimum. one. Yeah. And you just go like this. You just squeeze it, and it goes around your cervix when you shove it all the way up on your pussy hole. I think I've tried to do it, and I couldn't reach. What's this thing at the bottom, a little bag? Oh, my God. I didn't even notice that. It looks like when you buy a dolly at Dollar General, and it comes with a nice little outfit change. Wow. Maybe so, yeah, a... it's probably a nice little bag. But I haven't gotten a chance to try this uh, Eva cup. Eva, clearly trying to copy off a Diva isn't that, I, I just saw that and kind of felt a little bummed. And I'm like, and the fucking Curls MT font they used on the front. <laughs> look at that fucking bullshit. You know, you're already co-opting someone else's fucking name. Don't use Curls MT to try to sell your product. But I mean, they sold it to me. You know why they sold it to me? Because of the deal. Because this was six ninety nine versus paying fucking twenty two ninety nine dollars for the more expensive one. So, yeah. 10 out of 10 times, I'm going with the freaking deal. I want to see how it works for you. Yeah, I'll just make a video of it, and you'll get to see my fucking scrotum <laughs> pussy. It'll be disgusting. <laughs> and then you've got... And then I just got some panty liners in case I do start my period, because I don't like tampons. So I got some panty liners. Uh, they are long. It says long on them. And I like that it opens up like a dryer sheet box. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's on the go, nice and easy and it reachable. It just opens on the top, Yep, and you can just grab from the top. Yeah, so it's got leverage protection. I mean, it's got the whole deal. So we can pretty much do everything with those. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's that's really what I wanted to. I need you to show stop you looking over here at my command center. Well, I looked over at it. Stop looking at my control panel. This is mine, 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 mine. It belongs to only me and me and me and me, yeah. What? Yeah, dude, I don't give a fuck. Did you just interrupt our song? Daniels came over to ask, can I use your bathroom? <coughs> no, you go ahead, dude. I don't give a fuck. He is such an attention sinking. I, uh walked out to I was like walked out of my room naked grabbing something and Greg was like hey can you grab me a cup of water so I just walked over to him <laughs> naked as fuck and he goes whoa beef stew <laughs> he says the darndest things he man is really funny I see our boss in there uh Chelsea Lynn looking around. Looking around. Well, we got two shows uh, over the next two nights in Austin, Texas. We will um, already have done them by the time that this podcast comes out because uh, we did it early. <laughs> we did it early so it would be out on time and so you guys won't say, Oh, what the fuck is wrong with you guys? Can't you get it together? Yeah. 
Yep. So now, guess what? It's going to be out on fucking time, everybody. Well, don't say that because something could potentially happen during that time that just fucks everything up. Oh, for sure. We could totally be in This a doesn't record or... Vehicular... Well, I wouldn't say all that. Okay. <laughs> well, time to clean up this coffee that I spilled one hour ago and can still smell just as fresh right. as uh, just when as it fresh started. as can be. It's on my iPad thing here. I it's am gonna sorry. It's going to smell good, but it's going to really smell good. Yeah. We're going to have to take that off and give it a wash. All right, everybody. Uh, we love you. <laughs> All right, thanks for tuning in today, and that'll do it for this week's podcast. Goodbye. And cut. Uh, And cut. Thank you. Bye.